Yo, that would be the longest jump kick ever. Where you fall out of a plane and you kick him in the face as you land. Yo, so you saw us in Asia and now we're in Australia. I pet wild animals, I go surfing, I jump out of a plane, me and AB. It's crazy, you gotta check out this video and hopefully it inspires you to be more adventurous too. Definitely big shout out to KK Day for planning these activities that I may have never done if it weren't for them. These are the adventures in Australia. Andrew. On this trip, there's been plenty of firsts. Singapore, we did bungee. Uh huh. Thailand, jet ski and sea walk. Uh huh. Today, we're about to jump off a plane. All right. First up, me, AB, and our cameraman Jordan are jumping out of a plane in Melbourne. I'm not gonna lie, I'm still not scared yet, but I think when I put on the gear, I might start being scared. Are you scared yet? Not yet, not yet. I think once, once I look down, I'm gonna uh, have a couple prayers. In order to be a skydiving jump master, you have to have at least 500 jumps in before you can even bring anyone out with yourself. Right now, I feel pretty safe, but I'm on the ground. What's the point of uh, being weighed? Because the plane can only take a maximum amount of weight. So we need to know what you weigh, we know what our tandem masters weigh, and so the combination of all six of you gives us a, a maximum weight. Has anyone gotten hurt? Not that I know of. Okay. <laughs> Make sure, none nice. of, make sure none of your anatomy is yeah. crushed. Nice um, and tough then, I feel safe. <laughs> First off, they actually connect you to the aircraft. Mm -hmm. So they'll use one of these, whichever side is closest to the side of the aircraft, to do okay. that with. First parachute takes eight minutes to pack. Second parachute takes two hours minimum to pack. It is inspected every six months regardless. So, yeah, there is a backup plan. My heart is beating a little faster now, but I'm really excited. I'm glad to be doing this, uh, these kind of adventurous things, you know. Shout out to David. I know he's missing out on this. So yeah, let's go. I'm starting, I'm starting to feel it. Really? Now that we're strapped up. Yeah, you're a little scared. Not scared, but there's this. You got the rush. There's this feeling right here. I don't know, man. Can't describe it right now. It's just, it's a little nervous. Nah. Butterflies. It's gonna be lit. It's gonna be fun. Lady.
Yo! <laughs> So here's what happened. It was so quite exhilarating. Jordan jumps first, and then I jump second. You jump third. I'm sitting there watching you guys just vanish. It's it you hear a from scream. my angle. You I, no, you don't hear anything. It's like it's gone. All I see is clouds. Yeah, uh, it's it's pretty crazy to see someone get sucked out of an airplane. Yeah. But I will tell you guys, uh, the first 20 seconds are crazy. When you first jump out of the airplane, because your legs are dangling off the airplane. Yeah. Right? And you look down and you turn your head up. Were you, and then you drop. Did you spin? I was spinning for a little bit. Like I don't know how much I spun. Yeah, I don't, it I don't felt think like I was spinning for a little bit. Okay. And, and definitely when the parachute comes off and you're kind of floating, it's pretty fun too. It's also exhilarating because you kind of feel like you're I, on yeah. some sort of like. Once once it stabilizes, then you're like, all right, we're cool. Well, you're safe. Yeah. That's what you you, you feel a little more safe because the initial jump. It's, it's a rush. Yeah. It's something that, uh, I don't know, you want to feel like you can fly. Go with friends uh, or a significant other, you know, somebody to share that experience with. Yeah, cool people. Uh, I mean, I understand why it's on the bucket list. Yeah. I get it. I was telling yeah. you earlier, like, I didn't have to go. Yeah, I, I, I think I felt, I would feel yeah. the same. I was like, oh man, it was something I would do. You know, if it just came up, yeah, I'll do it. But, you know, no one ever set it up. I've been asked before, and sometimes it's expensive. But you know what, it's worth it. To be honest, this is something I never thought I'd be doing in America. Skydiving is just something I write off like it's not something that Asians do. It was really thrilling and it was a good memory. But next up, we're heading to Sydney for surfing for the first time. We are at the most famous beach in all of Australia right now. Yes, I'm talking about Bondi Beach. Nearly 90% of Australians live on or within the coastline, so you know beach culture is rich out here. Me and AB, we've never been surfing before, so something that we wanted to do when we got to Australia was take some authentic surf lessons. Let's, Let's catch, catch some, some waves. waves. I lived in LA for about five years and I never went surfing. All right, everybody, now it's time to meet our surf instructor, AKA the wave master, AKA the sensei of the sea for today. We got Justin. What's up, mate, you guys? Good What's to up, see you. Man? Thank you, man. How you doing? You guys are in luck today. We've got some really nice waves, one to two foot. Okay. Sun's coming out, we're gonna have a great day. It's okay, man. Sick. I've heard that surfing is a great way to start the day. Oh, of course, man, better than a coffee. What is bigger, surf culture or cafe culture? Oh, surf culture. Oh, 100%, that, man. That's big. Any day. Everybody lives by the coastline, mm -hmm. essentially. Yeah. Most people do. So, what percentage of Whoa. Australians have tried to surf before? At least taken surf. I've got to say, at least 10 or 20%. So, at least one in five. How long have you been surfing? Almost 20 years now. We're going to get you guys into some wetsuits. All right, sounds yeah. good. Nice. Awesome. Let's get gnarly. <laughs> Do you call them wetties? Just wetties. like these are. Uh, AB was wearing his sunnies. Yeah. Everything ends in an IA. We ate no. brekkie. Yeah, brekkie. Peace. First things first, make sure you apply a lot of sunblock. We're surfing pretty much during the holiday season. The only other place that you can kind of do this in the States is probably like San maybe Diego. San Diego, Hawaii, Southern California. Let's make our way to the yeah. beach. The Ash out there on surf for one of our other instructors. We're gonna do a similar thing to them. We actually, when we're at Bondi, we actually call it the sushi train. Because what we do is we're gonna use the rip, paddle out the back, move across, catch a wave in. So it's almost like a big circle we're gonna be doing out there. Ah, surfing is Asian influenced. <laughs> nice. What we do oh, here is go back, 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 back. Sand back, back, back. feels good in my feetsies.
surfing's fun. Woo. If you've ever talked to a surfer, they talk about surfing like it's an incredible man with nature, euphoric feeling, and I really honestly used to think they were crazy, but man, in my less poetic words, it just feels really, really cool. So we leave the beach now and are headed on to Port Stevens to continue our adventures. First, we feed emus and kangaroos, then we see dolphins, and then we sand surf. Man, it's wild. Keep watching, guys. At around about 20 minutes past 10. Oh man, it's clearly a kangaroo. Are it looks sure? the same. No, it doesn't. The legs are exactly the same. Tail's the same. How is it not a kangaroo? Dog, oh, that's a real koala. I've never seen one awake. They usually, I've never seen one awake. They use, oh, bro, you look fake. Yo. No, you're like the rap. Ah. It kind of hurts. Oh. Let me get, let me get. Ow. Oh, ow, I told you. Hey, bit my finger. That's all I got, bro. <laughs> Stop. Raptors. These are lace monitors. Lace monitors. Oh, he's just sliding through. I will say I'm pretty impressed at how close they let you get to the animals right off the bat. There's really no preparation. You just walk through, buy your ticket, and then you're out there with the kangaroos and emus. Hello, Mike. All right, so funnel web spiders are actually one of the poisonous spiders. But what they're asking, the zoo is actually asking for people, if they capture them, to donate them for a venom saving program so that they can make the venom that. Anti venom. The anti venom. Think they got Gatorade? Oh, Gator Crossing. Let's go. We're about to pet the Komodo dragon. This is late. What can do? Yep. Come down here with me. Just on the last 30 centimeters or so. Right here? Yep, right there. Right. Pretty rock solid. Yeah. So his name's Kraken. Kraken? Yeah. Kraken the Komodo. Nice. That doesn't hurt. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's only a baby, six years old. He's six years old. Yep. How much bigger would he get? He'll get twice as big at least. Oh. At the moment, he's about 35 kilos, kilograms. Yeah. He should get to about 70 or 80 potentially. Yeah. Wow. It was a really good experience to kind of like pet some wild animals, but uh, we got more stops on this tour. I got you, bro. Don't worry. He's gonna peck you. Oh man, <laughs> he got a lot of hand on that one. Yo, what a day at the Australian Reptile Park, man. We saw a bunch of live animals, but that was just stop number one of the day. Let's keep it moving, Andrew. We got a fun filled packed itinerary. Let's get out of here. Woo! All right, everybody, so we made it up to Port Stevens, which is often referred to as Australia's blue water paradise. Mm -hmm. AB, what are we gonna be doing here? We're about to go dolphin watching. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> that was weak. Everybody, we have just ended our dolphin watch out at Port Stevens. Earlier today, we saw the wild animals at the reptile park, and right now, AB, where are we going? We're going to hit up the sand to go sandboarding. Ooh, we went from the forest to the sea to the land to the sand. 
Let's go. Yo, I feel like I'm in Desert Storm, Gulf of Mexico. I feel like uh, the Noriega music video, Wild Thug. Oh, I also feel like uh, Animal Thugs. All right, man, so we hit the sand dunes and we're about to go catch some sand. Gnarly. Cowabunga. So to be honest, I never thought I'd be doing all this within a span of two days. Like, I definitely felt some feelings that I had not had before. But yo, thank you KK Day and thank you Australia. More from our trip coming soon. Stay tuned, y'all. Fung Bros World Tour continues. Yeah. Like wild dogs. So do you relate to them? Wow. I mean, are you a wild dog? Wild dog. Wow, wow, wild dog. <laughs>